So I was 17 years old in 1984 when I graduated from high school. I had hair too. In my teen years, my mother and I fought in epic battles with holes punched and lamps flung and necks strangled and words used in ways that only your family knows are destructive. After graduating, I was thrown out of the house. I slept over with various friends and their sympathetic parents for a couple of weeks while I figured out what to do. There was no way I would ever join the military, but I found the California Conservation Corps and decided to do that. I was not ready or able to take care of myself. My mom wasn't going to do it anymore, so they would do it for me. I was sent to the Sierra Foothills for training and met a 23-year-old girl from Kansas City named Jody. She was very nurturing and seemed so much older than me in the way six years seems so much older when you're 17. And we spent hours talking about everything that exists, full of new experiences and ungrounded curiosity. After training, she was sent to Chico, and I was sent to Humboldt County. But neither of us lasted very long in the job. I went back down home to Riverside and ended up with my grandparents. Jody returned to Kansas City. We wrote to each other over the next year, and one day I received a letter stating she was buying a van and driving back to California, that I want to join her. I had absolutely nothing going on, so I quit my dishwasher job, and with the $160 I had, I bought a plane ticket as far as I could, which was Albuquerque. <laughs> when, the, when the plane landed in Albuquerque, my next step was to catch a Greyhound and see how much farther I could get. Knowing that the bus stations are downtown, I started walking towards the tall buildings through deserted and dark urban neighborhoods and industrial zones, driven by naive adventure and the bright lights ahead. I found the bus station, but I only had enough money to get to Guthrie, Oklahoma. Well, what could I do? I bought a plane ticket to Guthrie. Uh, a train? No. Bus <laughs> ticket to Guthrie, Oklahoma. In Oklahoma City, I transferred on to another bus. The bus went up the interstate to KC by way of Guthrie. And since I did not have a ticket all the way to KC, my plan was to just fake sit the very back, fake sleep, and hope that the bus driver would forget about me when we arrived in Guthrie and I could just continue on. Well, that didn't happen. And I ended up broke in the middle of Oklahoma in the middle of the night. I started walking north on the interstate with my thumb out. After quite a long time, a car that finally picked me up had, do, had two guys driving to Wichita, with one pulling out a Mac-10 stating, we're going to Wichita to blow the balls off a guy who's screwing his wife. <laughs> in Wichita, I was picked up by a guy going to Missouri from Texas because his son had been in a car crash and was in very bad shape. He dropped me off at a truck stop in Kansas City. I had arrived with no money and a phone number. I called Jody, and when she got off work, she told me that there was no van. I don't remember why, but she hadn't bought it. She was also living with an aunt, and I couldn't stay with her. I couldn't understand why someone wouldn't let me sleep on their couch. So many people had taken care of me since my mom had thrown me out. But Jody found a place for me to stay at a YMCA homeless shelter and dropped me off. There have been plenty of opportunities on my journey to be frightened, but this was the first time I actually was. I had no idea what was going to happen next. I woke up early before anyone else and got the hell out of there. Jody would have to take care of me herself. And she was more than willing to try. It was a Friday, and she grabbed a tent and some sleeping bags, and we went to camp at Smithville Lake for the weekend. <laughs> you like that? Anyway. She also put the word out to friends and family that I needed a place to stay. We went to the county park and camped at the lake over a beautiful summer weekend. One afternoon, Lying in the tent next to each other, gabbing away, 
our feet started to touch and then rub up against each other. At one point, she stopped, and I said, my feet are lonely. <laughs> I then lost my virginity. <laughs> we didn't leave the tent for the rest of the weekend. Over that weekend, Jody's best friend, Debbie, had found me a room through her church with a very old couple. For the next few days, Jody and I talked about looking for a place together that we could afford. I mentioned this to my landlady, and she showed me a separate apartment attached to the house. She was an old church-going lady, however, and this was 1985, and she would only rent to a married couple. When Jody called back, I told her the conditions on renting the apartment. And at some point, I said, well, I guess we can get married. <laughs> what did you say? She asked, her voice quickly raised and excited. Well, we can get married and get the apartment, I said more hesitantly, not knowing if her change of tone meant, you're crazy, or what a great idea. <laughs> I wasn't which sure I want. I wasn't sure which one I wanted. It was just an idea. And she didn't respond either way. I'll call you back, she said quickly and hung up. While being six years older than me, Jody was not much more experienced with relationships than I. While she had taken my virginity, I was only the second person she had ever had sex with, and she had never had a boyfriend. I had traveled halfway across the country to see her, and she was not going to let me get away. My helplessness also my helplessness appealed to her mothering instinct as well, which, of course, was just what I was looking for. When she called back, she had a plan. In Oklahoma, there was no legal waiting period between getting a license and getting married. She would come get me in the morning, and we would drive down to Miami, Oklahoma. That's the place the people went when they eloped. I had seen too many 80s movies. Tomorrow, we would get married. I called my mother and told her I was in Kansas City and about to get married. She was understandably upset and against the decision, but she was able to maintain a relative calm. David, by the time I was 24, I was on my fourth kid and my third marriage. I know what I'm talking about. Unable to convince me, she told me to call my abusive alcoholic ex-stepdad, who happened to be visiting St. Louis at the time. Maybe she hoped he could do something. I told him about what I was doing and asked him if he could come to Kansas City. He congratulated me and couldn't make it. The next morning, Jody picked me up and we drove to Oklahoma. Her best friend Debbie came along and she thought we were idiots. Being the only one in the car not driven by out of control hormones mistaken for adult love, she saw the immense mistake her best friend was making and she was not happy. We didn't have wedding rings or money, so we stopped and bought some $2 gold color hoop earrings. With each mile we traveled, Debbie became more accept, more upset, more hysterical. I said nothing as Jody and Debbie went back and forth. Jody was driven. However, Debbie was having an effect on me. I started to bounce up and down in my seat, banging my head on my window and blathering nonsense. I couldn't articulate any thoughts or feelings. Everything was incomprehensible and happening so fast, my mind racing with a contradictory mix of excitement and apprehension that I did not understand and could not control. Jody laughed at my silly actions. Nothing would stop her, so I trusted her. She would take care of me. Whether either of us had any doubts, neither of us said anything. Debbie asked that we pull over to the liquor store, and she went out and bought some Everclear 190 proof and drank it fast. <laughs> I'm, this, I'm, stuff I'm cutting out about that part. Anyway, we pulled into downtown Miami, Oklahoma, bought our marriage license, 
and walked into Laverne's Wedding Chapel. <laughs> Laverne's original Wedding Chapel. I'm sorry. Don't accept invitations. Anyway. Deb yeah, what was I? Okay. Yeah. Dragging a very de drunk Debbie along. We were greeted by the minister, a very nice and patient lady. We paid for the service and walked into the chapel room. The minister asked us if he wanted to pray, and we didn't. But Debbie asked if she could pray with the minister afterwards. <laughs> I was wearing shorts, sandals, and a Husker Du t-shirt. <laughs> there was no prayer, though there was more God involved than either of us wanted. We took out our earrings, put them on our fingers, and we were married. Then we waited outside for Debbie to pray. On the way back to Kansas City, we stopped off at Lake Stockton State Park in Missouri, and Jody and I ran into a bathroom and consummated our marriage on a wet cement floor. We arrived back in Kansas City, rolled an incoherent Debbie out of the car, pulled into a church parking lot under some trees, had more sex, then fell asleep. I was 18 years old and 1,500 miles away from home, but all was okay. I thought I had found someone to take care of me. That didn't really turn out to be the case. And to my mom, who's right over there, <laughs> of course you were right. Of course I should have listened to you. And of course I was a fool to think anybody could replace you. That was Johnny B. Baker.